We will take you minute by minute, play by play, through what may have been the craziest half hour in football history. All that and more as we get up with you on this Monday. We are back. <laughs> We are presented by ESPN Bet. We are as fired up as it can possibly be. Brewski is here. Orlovsky will join us. Goldman Sachs is down the street. Yeah. Look at you doing that. Looking sharp. All right. We begin at the end of an unbelievable Sunday with one of the great performances that we have ever seen. Show me Saquon Barkley and the Eagles last night in Los Angeles. Yeah. If you didn't see what Saquon did, you're not going to believe it. Pick it up late second quarter. Eagles down 7-6. Not for long. Jalen Hurts looking for A.J. Brown. Teddy, corner of the end zone. Is he inbounds? He is. He, couple feet in, even a third. Still has possession. Great play to get it out, but this is enough. This is all you need to score a touchdown. That's good. They originally rule him out of bounds, and they reverse it. Eagles a 13-7 lead. Now, here we go. First play, third quarter, same score, first and 10. Rex, gone! Saquon <laughs> Barkley, not to be seen. So good. Saquon taking it to the house from 70 yards away to give uh, the Eagles mm, a 20-7 uh, lead. You can see a jock strap on the field. Look, <laughs> look at Man. him go. Oh, but he was just getting started, people. Next, Rams drive. Same score. Los Angeles a first and ten. Puka Nakua. How about this catch, Teddy? Well, how about the throw? I mean, it's it's amazing that this would even be an attempted. Stafford, mm. this guy, he ne he's always there, always battling. What a throw. Rams driving. We don't talk enough about the brilliance of Matthew Stafford. That's Demarcus Robinson for the touchdown. Rams make it a six-point deficit. Next, Eagles drive. Hurts dropping back. Here comes Saquon again. He was going to set all kinds of Eagles records tonight. This one's a gain of 31. One that sets them up in business in the next play. Teddy Kenneth Gainwell will punch it home to give the Eagles the commanding lead. Woody, when you got the big fellas up front that can block. Yes. Sometimes it don't matter the back. <laughs> nice job. Nice run. Okay, now here's a weird sequence. LA on a third and three. Stafford tries to get it to Nakua. The Rams are called for offensive holding. So it's fourth down as the Eagles decline the penalty. Then the Rams leave their offense on the field. Nick Sirianni changes his mind and accepts the penalty. Will the decision work? Yes. Yes, it very much great, would. Great call by Nick Sirianni. Knock him back there and get the sack. Stafford sacked by Milton Williams. Weird little sequence. And then finally, fourth quarter. Let's just put a little icing on the cake. Rex. Oh, there he goes. Oh, my goodness. But oh, too bad the Giants don't have a player like that. <laughs> Saquon, Saquon Barkley with 255 Dang. rushing yards, uh, setting uh. the franchise record for rushing yards in a single game, and the Eagles steamroll the Rams. Here's the story on Saquon. Entering yesterday, Saquon Barkley's odds at ESPN Bet to win MVP were 60 to 1, tied with Sam Darnold for 12th highest. After his 300 yards from scrimmage last night, he has shot up the board. He is now 6-1, to one, the fourth shortest odds of any player. D. Wood, do we, can we make a legitimate case for Saquon Barkley to be the NFL's MVP? Saquon Barkley is the league MVP right now. We, see, we, we're so busy giving the, the, the MVP to quarterbacks. Do, we, do people understand the greatness that we're seeing from Saquon Barkley right now? Saquon Barkley is on a pace to break Chris Johnson's all-time all, from all scrimmage yards yep. in a season. Like, that is ridiculous. This man has been, I, I, listen, absolutely the best signing in free agency, running behind this absolute wall that is the Philadelphia Eagles Great offensive, offensive line. line. And when you're able to run the ball like this, Rex, we always talk about ground and pound, right? When you're able to run the ball like this, it permeates through every other aspect of the team. The way that, that Jalen Hurts is playing, all the defense is playing. Saquon Barkley literally is the catalyst for this Philadelphia Eagles. I, I agree. Has anybody had the impact Saquon Barkley has? The answer is absolutely not. The guy's been amazing. By the way, this is not the Davey O'Brien award at having <laughs> right. you know, best quarter. It's supposed to be the most valuable player. No way in heck is this guy off that list. Can we running make back a point? Needs this type of year, though. A running back needs this because you're battling quarterbacks. Right. You yeah. need moments. He's got the reverse hurdle. He's got if, if he right. gets, if he yeah. I think he needs 2,000. 
I mean, he needs that mark you're talking about, but he's right up there with quarterbacks. This is what a running back needs to do to win the award. Well, he's got a 300-yard scrimmage game, and he jumped over a man backwards. I'm not sure if he's got a better <laughs> size than that. But let's like also that. make a point. We made on Sunday NFL Countdown yesterday. You had a stat about explosive plays yeah. that the Eagles have so much more than everybody else. People don't get those from running backs, right? You're not expecting to get those explosives on handoffs. That's what Saquon brings. It's not ground and pound. It's ground and long touchdowns. That is something no one else in the league is getting. No, absolutely. And the thing is, though, uh, I mean, you're right. But he also does it in the pass game, the run game, and all that. And when you're running the football, it sets up explosives from your quarterback to be able to throw it down the field to A.J. Brown and company. This guy right here is absolutely ridiculous. And, and the explosive plays, look, they're two to one run to pass. Mm -hmm. All right. That's the dang formula they, they've taken in this seven game win streak. It's been amazing. Literally, it's been 75 years since anybody's had these kind of explosive numbers in a, in a uh, uh, seven game stretch. You got to go back. To the, uh, to the Philadelphia Eagles 75 years ago. 75 Let's years. Let you guys do the math on what year that was. But I, I'll tell you this, and they had a difference maker then too. Steve Big Boy Van Buren was the running back. Yes. Concrete Charlie, Chuck Bednarik was Let's on not do team. this. Okay. Let's, yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. Let's not go there. Let's, Let's not talk about the 1950 It's been 100 Eagles. years. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Guys, we've never seen anything like it, and it's the running game. And it's more than the running game with Saquon, though. It's almost, it's almost like the culture. It's like the energy. It's like the leadership that he's bringing. When Gainwell scored his touchdown, who was the first going down there? I mean, it's Saquon. He, he's not thinking about MVP. He's thinking about winning football games. Right. He's quoting see, this right here. I see that as a defensive player on this team, and this guy is in the MVP conversation, and he's saying what he says about winning football games. You believe that. What was in Philadelphia before? It was the core four. Well, you're starting to lose them. They're starting to get old. Kelsey's gone. Cox is gone. Graham's getting old. Lane Johnson's getting old. Is Jalen Hurts that type of person that can pick up an entire team with his energy and lead? He's a great quarterback, but it's not that personality. This team needed Saquon. He's quoting Nick Sirianni yeah. after the game, talking mm. about his favorite Nick Sirianni quote. You know what that says to all the younger guys? It's like, I'm the best player on this team. Yep. I believe in my head coach. Listen to what coach is saying because I want it to resonate to you also. That's leadership. That's culture. This is, this is what the Philadelphia Eagles have, along with these numbers that are astronomical now. Saquon's taking over this team in the league. I'm sorry. Can I tell the numbers? Please right, The do. numbers were this. All right, the average points, all right, 30 to 15 right. in a seven-game stretch. Average yards, 403 for Philly, the opponent, 223. Mm -hmm. Explosives, nine uh, on average against four. This is unreal. It's unreal, and literally it's been 75 years since we've seen a team like this. So what it begs is the question. In, in a league or a conference, at least, where I have been asking Lions of the field, Lions of the field for what feels like a long time. Yeah. Is this clearly now a two-horse, not a one-horse race? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, listen, it's right now as a field because the way the Philadelphia Eagles are playing, they, we, Rex, we had talked about this. Philadelphia Eagles absolutely have the personnel to match up with the Lions uh, on, on both sides of the ball. We, we talked about the big boys up front. The, they got the skill position player. Obviously, we talked about Saquon being the catalyst. The defense and how the defense has been playing so much better in this seven-game winning streak. Right now, in the NFC, it's absolutely a two-horse race. I'm, I'm still going Lions rather than the field. And why I'm saying that is because the consistency that the Lions have had throughout the course of the season. I've seen this from the Eagles, and I've seen that. They're on a great streak now, yes. But the Lions, in terms of from week to week, knowing who they are, every single week answering the call of, 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 of different ways of winning football games, I'm really impressed with the Lions. Okay, so we will have much more on the top of the conference as we continue. But right now, just put your feet up, folks, because with, with a shout-out to my friend Scott Hansen. Deep breath. Yesterday's witching hour yeah. might have been the, the witching hour. 38 minutes as losses became wins and wins became losses. <laughs> Here we go. We start at 3.59 p.m. Three. Eastern time. Cowboys have a three-point lead against Washington. They're receiving a kick. Cavante Turpin. Wait a minute. He's going to muff it, right? We're going to have a little... Oh, no. Oh, They're going to get stuck in their own end zone. Oh, no. He's going to spin move. Oh, no. Wait a minute. And then, Rex, what happens next? Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Woo! And Kevontae Turpin 
running faster than a human should be allowed. Cowboys take a 10-point lead. Now, exactly one minute later, Titans, Texans, Kaimi Fairbairn trying a 28-yard field goal to tie this game. Teddy. Kickers. Kickers! <laughs> awfully missed for the Texans. Now we're three minutes later. Carolina, Chiefs, and Panthers. Panthers are down eight points. Chuba Hubbard punches wow. it in. Mm. Panthers got to go for the nice two. Carolina. Where are you going to go for it? Right back to Chuba Hubbard. Right back at him. And they right get it. Panthers tie the game at 27. Wow. Now we're four minutes later. Back to Houston. Texans at their own one. Redemption, thy name is Orlovsky. Where is no. DJ Strauss? Oh, going? no. Oh, no. No, no. no. Titans wind up beating the Texans 32-27, but in the exact same minute that that safety took place, the Bears are down 11, and Caleb Williams is going to do this. Mm. Spectacular move. Oh, my that, God. That's USC Caleb Williams right there. Uh, Keaton Allen is there. Bears get the two-point conversion. That's a three-point game. One minute later, Patrick Mahomes, every now and again, D. Wood, he pulls out a run that looks something like this. He does it. seems like he does it every single week. When there's a play to be made, he makes the play with his legs. So they're set up in field goal range. Three minutes later, the Bears onside kick. Rex, does this ever work? It never works. Onside kicks never work, Greeny. What's the one key? Don't touch it inside of 10 yards. Front row players that are, have the responsibility to block. You got to be clear of the ball first. The Bears are going to get a chance. But first, two minutes later, Spencer Schrader, former Jet, lining up Kansas City. That's good. They win it 30 to 27. The Chiefs escape. Now we're one minute later. The Bears, Cairo Santos. Oh, what could possibly go wrong oh, here? Oh, their money, their kicking game is phenomenal. But he makes this oh. one. And yep. so, improbably, the Bears force overtime. Now, get on, Caleb. One minute later in Washington, 33 seconds left. The Commanders are down uh, by I seven. Obviously, the game's over. They have no timeouts. Terry McLaurin. <laughs> Whoa! You got him surrounded. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Somebody should tackle. 21 seconds. Should they go for the two? Should they have gone for the two? Uh, what, you're right kicking now, with absolutely. Kicking this year? Oh, oh, absolutely. No. Awesome. Now, yes. Yes. Awesome. yes. Dennis Seibert misses the extra point, so they go for the onside kick. But wait a minute. It's going to be one yay Thomas. Oh, that's Rex, one. <laughs> Cowboys win it 34-26 and then finally at 437 in Chicago, 38 minutes after the chaos began, John Parker Romo from 29 yards away and the Vikings beat the Bears 30 to 27. I love football. Losses oh. big. <laughs> I love, I love.